I should unmute my microphone, that would be a great start to the stream, wouldn't it? Hello, hello, and welcome for some more Mage Night. Um, I've had a few follows. I have, for the first time, actually put a post that I stream. So I would imagine a few of you may have seen that today. So welcome. Those coming back, also welcome. Um, one thing I will say about this app, Tabletop Simulator, it is fantastic if you are uncertain about the game at all, but really want to either get to grips with your box or you're wondering whether it is something that you will enjoy, I would highly recommend it. It's the Mage Knight Plus Highly Scripted app on Tabletop Simulator. It's free in the workshop if you have Tabletop Simulator and it is constantly updated. The most recent update for it was a couple of days ago. 14th of November, so there's always little bits getting implemented, but it really just makes everything so easy to use. If you are entirely new to Mage Knight, here is, oh, I can work my commands. Bit of an overview of things. Basically, it's a card driven exploration game. This is going to be the first of what will now be a regular Monday night session. So we have plenty of different scenarios as well as various different mage nights. I am open to suggestions. If people want to see a particular mage, why not chuck out a comment? Otherwise, I might start with something simple like the, the conquest. If we do have a few people who aren't overly familiar with Mage Knight, that's a good way of jumping straight in. If I'm glancing constantly over to the side, it is because that is where my chat is. But I know there's always a bit of a delay, so I'll keep talking a little bit about what we're going to be doing. Um, with this, I will try and explain my train of thought. Hey Jamie, good to have you back, man. Um, I'll always be trying to explain my train of thought, the various different options presented to us, uh, to us and why I'm taking a particular course of action, obviously, with a game like this. There are many different avenues to success. We can't predict what's going to come up in the future, but at least then hopefully it gives you a bit of an impression as well as to how the game is structured and decisions you could make along the way. We'll jump straight in then. We'll go with the Conquest. We won't do Blitz, we'll just have a standard game, levels 5 and 8, and not play too much around with the settings. If you are new in the chat, uh, either to the game or to the channel, do pop any comments and queries in there, that's no problem. So, the game itself will sort everything out for us. It will sort out these terrain stacks, we're always going to start with the countryside, the light green tiles before moving on to the core tiles. It highlights where you can put countryside, so countryside could be anywhere, core just in the middle. You've got score, got a little chest if you make a mistake for anything gets deleted and that is definitely something I make use of because uh, I make mistakes. But it, it does a lot of the scripting and set up for you so things are nice and easy. First thing we're going to do is take a look at our starting tiles and decide from the hand that we have what we want to face. So actually we don't have too many options on this first, first tile. There is one rampaging orc. Would give us enough fame to level up. Three fame is enough. Or we've got the chance of a keep. Our opening hand, there's certainly not enough here that we would move over and be able to attack somewhere first turn. But we could potentially get to a village and recruit actually any of these individuals. And we do have our influence card. So that's something to bear in mind. That might be our first turn to head probably to this village. Um, Mr. Tears, thank you very much for a follow. Um, we'll head 
probably to this village. We might recruit this turn, we might recruit the turn after. Recruiting is your one action for the round. So if we can do it this turn, it'd be better. But white mana for the influence. Move two. Or five, four. If we can get there and hire something, keeping two cards in our hand, then planning would be worthwhile getting. But I don't believe we could. On the other hand, I don't think great start is particularly worthwhile either. So let's go with planning. With a solo game, quite often the tactic that you take as well as the tactics that the dummy uses are removed from the game. So if we don't take it now, there's a, a reasonable chance the dummy player might take it. He actually takes the other one we were tossing up, the great start. So four goes before five. So I'll talk through our turn first of all. We will start here. Terrain costs are outlined on the tile here, and you can use one of the die from the mana pool on your turn, as well as any number of crystals or mana tokens you get from elsewhere. We could get our influence and movement a few different ways based on the cards. Improvisation, not improvisation, do with. Uh, lots of flexibility, movement, influence, which is relevant for us now, as well as attack and block. Top ability on a card. Ooh, if I zoom in a bit. In this case, the discard to get three is always something you can use from a card. And the bottom action needs to be powered by a mana crystal or a mana of that color. Can be from crystals, can be from a die, but we need to have that mana for the stronger effect. If we're thinking about going to this village, it's two grass terrain, it's four movement. Now, depending on who we want to hire, we either need to generate three, five, or four influence. And because they've all got this house icon that relates to the village, they are all recruitable here. So, movement is generally useful to have. These have a bit more flexibility. We've got attack block and influence. But this has the bonus effect that the cost of forest hills and swamps for their movement is reduced. So slightly better movement, slightly higher armor. But this has an attack and influence as well. Now, if we're generating four movement, we could get two. three, four. Any card can always be used as one of a basic action. So that would be either movement, influence, attack, or block. So these two cards could count as one movement each and two movement here. And we could get five influence with this red die. Or we could get the movement here and get our influence and play some cards sideways. I think if I want to get five influence, oh, let's make use of the button. We want five influence. I think we claim the foresters and this would be the way we get our four movement then and the five influence. So we aren't going to gain any benefit from our planning tactic because this requires us to have two cards in our hand at the end of the round. But that might come into effect in subsequent turns. That feels pretty good. We get our four movement to four and then using the mana die for the stronger effect claim and we have this token where you can have as many units as you have command tokens as you level up and you get more command tokens you can recruit more units. At the end of our turn we can just click this button, it will re-roll the die, everything you've played gets discarded. Boom, 
Easy. So the dummy player, their turns are really easy. Uh, we got no rewards, so that's fine. Dummy player, they will draw three cards. And it's going to do this fairly quickly, but I'll show you in a second. So it's drawn three. If we look at all of their cards, the first three here, they drew a blue, green, and then white. And the third one's the important one. Whatever the third card is, you check the number of crystals. In this case, white, they have two. So he's drawn two extra cards. So they will always draw at least three cards on their turn. Could be more depending on crystals. And this deck acts as the timer for the scenario. When he runs out of cards, we need to make sure we finished up what we want to get done as well. So we can't be acting too slowly. Now, I didn't actually look to see uh, who we were, but this is one of his special cards. We have Ruthless Coercion. Influence 2, you may get a discount of 2 towards the cost of recruiting a unit. Patient minus 1. Influence 6, and we may ready units. That's quite interesting. And we have his other one, which is move 2, and once this turn, when you move a space, you may discard a card to gain a crystal of the same colour. Uh, and if we discard an artifact, we get to choose the colour. For the stronger effect, we can do it multiple times. Interesting. So we do have this optional action available to us here. Anytime you're on a village, which we are, you can plunder it before your turn. You will lose one reputation, which is the track here, and this penalizes you when you're trying to recruit units. But we can draw two extra cards, so we'd have seven cards in our hand. If we're looking at moving at least, well, quickest way would be through the forest, six movement to get into the keep. We're probably looking at savage harvesting maybe stamina, but we're running pretty low on cards. So I think that is going to be a good move. The other option to us, we could just move into the forest and flip over the keep token. We'll know then whether we could take it and we could move in, or we wait until the next turn, because we will only be using probably two of these cards to get that movement we could gain the benefit of planning and have an additional card. But because the dummy player started by drawing five cards from his deck and he has 11 left. Actually, we have six because we did use a full five cards to start with. Yeah, we don't have to necessarily act quickly. And yes, I will add my score to the archives. Let's, we, can, we can afford to go slowly. Let's do it, because then we can use stamina. Actually, I probably want to get a crystal. We do savage harvesting with the green crystal. We can discard Ruthless Coercion for the effect of this, just to read it again. Once this turn, when you move a space, you may discard a card to gain a crystal of the same color. So if we get a, a red crystal from this, we might draw an attack card. Jamie, Mage Knight is a exploration game driven by the actions we can do from the cards in our hand. We're looking for a couple of cities in this particular scenario, which we have to liberate or conquer, depending on which way you want to view the side we're on. So we're going to generate four movement, and we will get our red crystal by also discarding this card with it. We only need three movement get into the forest and immediately upon here if we flip over this token 
we lock in our decisions up to that point. Because Mage Knight's quite a complicated game, it does let you undo actions so far as new information hasn't been revealed. That might be revealing a tile, or in this case, flipping over the garrison. But during the daytime, we can see who's guarding it. We do have one movement point left over. We've got the foresters for movement if we wanted. But with these cards, we'd probably be hard pushed to take them on. But let's see what's in there. Okay, shock troopers. Any iconography? I'll explain as we're fighting them, but there is always this nice reference sheet for everything. And also, if you want to work out the probabilities of drawing a token that you could fight, that is here as well. Combat is predictable. Now that we know it is the shock to troopers, we will know if we have enough to take them on. So what I like to do is just bring it over. I can put it back if need be. We would need five to block their attack. So this fist shows their attack. And if it's got any type of element to it, this is just actually a physical attack. So any block is efficient against it. We could get block five. But unfortunately, we don't have any blue crystals. We only have a red. We could use the foresters for block three and the determination for block two but we can't generate three attack. Interestingly, the shock troopers have this one ability, this castle with a cross through it, which means they cannot be fortified. So although we're attacking them in a keep, we could take them out in the range phase. So swiftness is range attack. Problem is this six sneaky in the background means if you do not block their attack their armor is six and although range happens before you would need to block their attack you haven't blocked their attack so during the range and siege phase their armor is six now uh, we definitely can't take them out this turn so let's put them back and this will be our turn all we did was play savage harvesting with the green mana die for that stronger effect. Discarded this one influence card. Got our crystal and that's it. End the turn. Again, they're just discarded. We've re-rolled a red. No reward. We're gonna draw up to six though. So the scripting in the game automatically knows we have two cards in our hand and it will let us draw one more. Normally our hand limit as shown by this command token is only five. Our armor is also shown here as two. So no rewards, we can click this button and just process the dummy. So his third card is blue. He has no blue crystals. That is his turn done. So the dummy player for Mage Knight, really, really easy. It is only there to make sure we don't dally around too much. Okay. We have got a red crystal that we could use here, which is good. And we have blue mana in the source. We can very easily fight this keep now. But let's move in there. We need, because it's a hill terrain, three movement. We could use our foresters. They generate two movement and reduce the movement cost of hills by one. Might not be a bad use for them, but the way I always like to think of units, it's a permanent card in your hand. So if you have a lot of units, it's effectively having that extra size draw limit. The longer I can keep him, the better placed we are for further turns. And since we can definitely take this guy out nice and easily, I'm not gonna not gonna waste it. We'll use two cards just for their basic move two. So this generates four movement, which is overkill, but it gets us into the keep. 
And there's a couple of things if we focus on the right hand side of the screen that's going to change. When we do the assault, it means clicking this button, we're losing one reputation. Anytime you attack a fortified site, in this case a keep, but also mage towers and cities, you lose a reputation. The people of this land don't like you attacking these established places. If you kill monsters that are rampaging, so this orc, any of the green tokens here, or the raging, uh, the rampaging dragons, you would gain reputation because people are pretty happy you've stopped them from pillaging the wild, uh, the countryside or the wildlife getting eaten. So, same would be if we manage to kill these guys. The fame reward is shown at the bottom. In this case, the little red banner for three fame. So far, all we've done is move on to this space. Let's generate that five block using the blue mana. So they're blocked. That lowers their attack down to three. What we could do then is a couple of options. We could either use our red mana to get attack four, and that's just it, combat over. Or if we want to save the crystal, we could discard either of these cards um, in order to get a, a third, basically, as I said at the start, just tapping it sideways for one of a basic ability. You can't ever discard for extra range attack or extra siege attack. It is only the basic ability. But then two attack from rage plus tranquility would give us the three that we need for these shock troopers. The problem with this combination is we lose the benefit of planning, but we keep a crystal. I think I'll go with this combination. So these effects are correct. If you are using this scripting, what you would do is just flip the token over if you're unable to defeat it and it will automatically put it back in the spot it's come from. You don't gain the fame. You will always still lose one reputation for starting the attack, even if you can't finish what you've started. But we are able to kill them. We will end the turn and level up. So, as you can see, our reputation has decreased. We're still at a zero modifier, but it has dropped. And that three reputation, uh, three fame has leveled us up. So now we will get one more advanced action and a skill token. First time we level up, our options are easy. It's just either of the tokens we draw. For the first one, battle hardened, either the next two points of damage assigned to your hero from a single, either ignore the next two points of damage assigned to your hero from a single physical attack or one point of damage from a non-physical attack. Okay. Mm. The problem with this, you can't partially block an attack. You either fully block it or it's not blocked. So although this is quite nice to reduce some damage, you can't to fully mitigate it unless it's a very weak attack to start with. Another ability, when you spend a mana of a basic colour, gain a crystal of that colour. And then on the next turn, gain the mana token on this skill. In a co-op, um, in a solo game, you use the co-op skill, but the effect that would normally happen during the round for other players to take advantage of you get to take advantage of it on your next turn. That's one of the solo player rules that's often overlooked, is how to use the co-op skill. So this saves us mana. When you spend a mana, gain a crystal of that colour. I think I quite like that.
And then you notice another skill token joins the offer. After we have selected from our token, one from Narrowus appears. Next time we level up, I can show you we'll have a few more options available. But this additional skill token is always after you've made the choice. So in the first round, we only have our skill token to choose from. We do also get one advanced action. So more influence or attack. And it's quite a strong attack. It can be an attack seven. Temple portal can be really useful. It lets you move two spaces to a revealed safe space. So literally opening a portal, which can be very useful to get you past rampaging monsters or across a lake, things like that. Blood Ritual, very good way of getting more crystals. We have just taken a skill that gets us crystals. So that's less enticing to me. I'd like something that would be beneficial. And early on, I prefer not to lose all of this reputation really early in the game. So I'm actually going to go Temporal Portal. The Intimidate action is nice getting an attack seven, but let's claim this. It's not going to disappear straight away. We might get a chance to get Intimidate. And now we get that. And unlike the units, advanced actions and spells refresh immediately. Units will only refresh at the start of a round. Okay, so we have gained our level up rewards. And we can confirm our hand size and you notice it says six we were saying we're not getting the benefit of planning because we only have swiftness in our hand and this token still says that our hand size is five the reason we're getting a sixth card is because we're on a keep that we have conquered if you are on or adjacent to a keep that you control your hand size is one larger for every keep that you have under your control. So if we had managed to keep two cards, we would actually have a hand size of seven because both bonuses would combine. As it stands, we actually only have five cards left. So it doesn't make any difference to us. Dummy player drew green as its third card, has one crystal, so they've drawn one more we can see they've got four cards. So at this point, it's not a big issue because we've gone so quickly. We're unlikely to run out of turns, but normally I'd be thinking in my head, what does he have left? So I always have a search. He's drawn one, two, three white cards. He's drawn one, two, three green cards. So actually he's drawn three of everything. So there is four of each color card in his deck. Anything is still possible. The third card he draws could be any of those colors. If we'd seen all of his white cards and all of his green cards, we'd know he could only draw three and would have at least three turns left. The way the dummy player will work, he'll draw three, then potentially another one. When it gets back to his turn, if this deck is empty, he calls end of round and we've got one more turn. So we've got our current turn. Potentially, he'll take a turn, another one, end of round, another one. So we've got either three or four turns left, which with only five cards is plenty more than we need. We've got concentration. We've got Mana Enhancement, Mana Draw. We've got a lot of abilities to get Mana, which we don't really need at this time. I think we're going to have to use the Foresters for movement. We take the top tile, place it here. And again, as soon as we reveal this, we are locked into our decisions. So I can't later decide, oh, we could generate two movement from swiftness instead. 
because I want these guys, I'm going to need to block with them. Once we've revealed new information, we are locked in. So, flip that over. And fortuitously, we have an orc summoner adjacent to us. We cannot move into his space. We could move adjacent. But we can also provoke from adjacent. And he's for fame, which sadly doesn't quite level us up. He's not on anything important. No, they never are. We don't actually have any movement left. The Mage Tower could be interesting. We might want to conquer it, depending on what's here. All your units gain all resistances. All enemies blocked during the block phase get their armor reduced to one. That's quite nice if you're taking on a city. Mana Bolt will probably disappear. Don't think we're going to have the option of also taking on the Mage Tower. So we can use Temple Portal when we're cooling end of round. And then we'd start with a hand limit one higher at the start of next round, which will be good if we're planning on taking on the Mage Tower. Plus we could be adjacent. This is your action for the turn. So we couldn't provoke and do an attack as well as play Temporal Portal. So we'll have to use Swiftness for movement. And it's two movement, we can come here. Moving from an adjacent space to the rampaging enemy to another rampaging space to the enemy, they're going to attack us. They're not going to stand for that sort of nonsense. We're going to have to fight these summoners. Hey, a chalk, good to have you back, man. How have you been? For the horde. Um, no, unfortunately. No, we're on the other side tonight. Okay, so their ability shows this brown token. And this means if they're attacking us, we have to draw a brown enemy. We have to deal with their attack. And then it disappears. We don't have to kill that token. They literally just summon it. It damages us, disappears. And then we have to deal with their four armor here. But because this is a rampaging enemy, they are not fortified and we can use our ranged ability. Swiftness needs to be powered with white mana and gives us range attack of three. They have an armor of four. That's not quite enough. But what we could power up instead using gold mana, which counts as any color that we want. We can use the bottom ability of concentration. So when we play this, play another card with it and get the stronger effect of that card for free, plus two, whether it's attack, move, influence, or block. So we basically use concentration and choose to have swiftness as a stronger ability. Mana enhancement, when you spend a mana of a basic color, gain a crystal of that color. So we can't flip this and choose anything because we are actually spending a gold mana. It doesn't count as green. Otherwise, I'd probably flip this and get a green crystal. You're doing good? Awesome. Good to hear. So we've got five range attack, which is enough to kill the summoners before they would be attacking us. 
And we can end the turn there. This time we're gaining one reputation because, as I said, we're killing these rampaging enemies. Four fame. End the turn. Black. Black mana cannot be used during the day. It shows that night is coming. As the sun starts setting, you collect more and more black mana. It's getting closer and closer to night, which is quite a good thematic thing. I, I like that. So we've claimed our rewards. Unfortunately, we didn't level up. Hand size of 7, because we have 2 cards, giving us the planning bonus. And we're next to a keep. But we have nothing left to draw, so we're going to only have these 2 cards in our hand. The rewards are claimed. The dummy draws blue. So we do still have this turn, his next turn. We have a turn, he calls end of round, then it's our last turn. So strangely we have 3 more turns. We're not going to need them. Uh, one thing, at the end of the round, or when we moved adjacent even, we should have flipped the familiars. And actually these are not fortified either. But they have two attack threes and an armor of seven. So we are definitely not going to be killing them this round. But what we will do... We can use mana draw. Take a mana die from the source and set it to any color except gold to gain two mana tokens of that color. And temporal portal. As above, except you can either move two spaces or one and get your hand limit increased by two instead of one. So I want to use this token. And it's whether I use white mana and flip this to get a white crystal, or I use it to get blue mana and flip it to get a blue crystal. Those are our options for this round. I think I'll go with blue because our blue cards are generally pretty versatile. You've got Determination for that strong block, Stamina for Movement, we've got our new Temporal Portal card, another Stamina and Crystallize. The white mana for ranged attack is pretty good, but the other one is Mana Draw and Influence. I don't know, it's six or two threes, they're both really strong, but let's take a blue mana. And that will. Oh, we can move. We're just going to move one space. I'm just going to move back to this space. In case on our first draw next round we don't get anything good, we've got the option to just move on. But we get the benefit of the keep. We're going to have a hand size two bigger because of temporal portal. We're going to have eight cards. It's going to be night, so movement into the desert is going to be easier. We should be able to take out the familiars, but... Process the dummy. We're cool, end of round. Yeah, it won't be this round. So, all you do, moving from day to night, you remove both tactics that have been used. Flip the board. So you can see desert movement is now three. It was five during the day. Forests are harder to move through during the night. Easier during the day. Again, it's a little rule thing, but it makes sense. It's a lot easier to walk through the desert at night. Easier to walk through the forest during the day. Vlada does great, like little rules which seem like they're just an extra annoyance but a, a really good thematic little rule. So we need to choose something. I like sparing power. We can put cards into a big stockpile for one really big attack. But 
we're not going to be attacking a city this time and it's great for when you're attacking a city to be able to draw on all of these extra cards. Preparation's okay. It lets you draw one extra card of your choice into your hand. Um, and actually what we should have, let's draw our next two cards. The game doesn't automatically give us these because it doesn't remember we used um, a card I can't remember the name of. Temporal Portal? Doesn't remember we've used it. But let's think. We needed seven ranged attack. We have concentration and one swiftness for five. Don't have any more. We've got one block ability. But nothing else. But actually, we're not in a great spot to fight these. We could use preparation to get another block card into our hand. But I think I might just burn a lot of cards and go with Long Night. We'll be going first, probably. It's a 1 in 5 chance, so 20% he pulls from the dusk. And if he does, he doesn't get rid of a good card. All this would mean is when we get to the bottom of our D deck, we put three cards back in randomly. So we'll go for this. Dummy player. He takes preparation. So that's a shame. It is a good card. But we are going first. So let's have a look at our options here. Again, there's no new information being revealed, so we can lay out our cards, decide whether it's something we can do. If not, put them back and go, you know what, fine, let's just move over here and leave it be. So, um, if you are playing a multiplayer scenario, you know, you can sort of offer advice if need be. Um, I think it says in all sort of it, it's accepted a, a nice sweet spot is three players because if you've just had your turn you can be looking over the actions of the next player whilst they're playing cards because there can be a lot to keep track of and the third player is thinking about their turn and then you just sort of move around so you've got plenty of time to think about what you're doing but you've got other people sort of helping with your game as well but Yes, let's bring him back. We've got white and red mana. So we don't have green mana to power up concentration, which is a bit of a problem. But we can use it to get another mana. Now we've got improvisation, which we can use as a block three. There's no point us generating block five and discarding another card because you cannot combine attacks. Um, well, we'd need another card anyway. But if we were generating six block, it doesn't block both attacks. You could assign five block to one and over block it. Um, but yeah, you can't combine them. So there's no point using the red mana, at least not there. But I think block three is pretty good here. Just before I get rid of Promise, which is our influence, let's just have a look at the new units that have come out. There is this symbol on the golems, which means uh, they could be recruited at a mage tower. It would be seven influence. Not sure we're going to go with them. I think we had only level 1 units in the first round, and these are only level 2, but that is pure coincidence that it was round 1 and round 2. Um, yeah, there is a card there. So that's one attack blocked. We could let the other attack through, but it's brutal, which means you double the attack strength. So it would actually be an attack of 6, and we'd take 3 wounds, which... It's pretty tough going. We've got foresters for one of those blocks.
Let's think if we need to get seven attack. Got attack four. Or we can get attack five. We're not using this to heal after we've blocked. Let's use that as a block. This is a block three. This is a block three. We can then use red mana improvisation to get attack five. And then how are we getting two more attack? Just discarding two, six, seven. Pretty inefficient, isn't it? But we're using red mana, we could get another red mana. I think it's the same either way, isn't it? We use this for a block. Attack. Four, five. Block three. Yeah, it works out exactly the same, whichever way, whether whichever one's blocking. Unfortunately, we can't get green mana for this. We could use it to gain a mana and power up swiftness. Using that white mana token from concentration for the stronger effect. And then we could keep two of our influence cards. That might be an option. We've got improvisation with one card discarded as a block. Attack four. And then concentration for a white mana to power this. You can ready by paying two influence per level of unit. Possibly. We might we could get them readied again, plus hire a unit. Get the other red mana then. And flip over this token. And that gives us a red mana to use on our next turn. We've got white mana in the source. And although I would prefer to take a white crystal, we would definitely be able to use promise next turn. And having this spare red mana means we can use coercion. That would be 10 influence. Two can be used to ready this unit again. And we've got no reputation, so we can use seven. We'll have eight left over, but we can use seven to hire the, golem, uh, the guardian golems. So that seems like a pretty good turn. We've got a movement for the turn afterwards. It's a shame to get rid of concentration, but we haven't got green mana. We don't have green dice in the source. It would be a gamble, a one in six chance that we get it. So let's end our turn. Again, we're going to lose reputation because this was a fortified site. <laughs> what a great source. White mana. Fantastic. So we've leveled up again this time. The symbol just shows a command token. So what we've done is flip one more token over. So this was our, as you can see on the top, our level one to two token. We're now level three. So we've got this. Our hand size is still five, but our armor is up to three. 
And importantly, with a new command token, we can hire a new unit. And that's what we've planned to do for our Guardian Golems. We have claimed our reward. There's nothing else except this token. Oh, and a spell. So at the end of the turn, the end of the round, sorry. So we finish the first day round. The advanced action in the bottom, or in this case, leftmost space, gets added to the dummy player's deck. The spell card in the leftmost, you look at the color and you add a crystal of that color to the dummy player's backpack. In this case, it must have been a blue spell. This means when they draw their cards, there's more chance they're going to be drawing more um, based on the color of that third card. But equally, they have that one additional card in their deck. We have given them a red card. And as you can see now, have five red, four green, four blue, four white, and they have no red crystals. So that actually worked out quite well. We want to, if possible, not give them white cards because Increasing the chances of drawing white when they have two white crystals means they're going to go through their deck quicker. So your choices of advanced actions and spells will be influenced slightly by what's happening over here, but it isn't the biggest consideration. Um, so I liked Cure because any blocked enemies will have their armor reduced to one, which for a siege on a, of a city can be very useful. But there's also this option, enemies lose all fortifications, this enemy, or enemies lose all resistances, this combat. Again, very good for a combat against a city, because everyone will be fortified. We haven't picked up any extra range attacks or any extra siege attacks, so either is a bit of a coin toss at this point. Um, we've picked up a blue advanced action. Let's go for expose. As I say, literally a coin toss for me. Both of those are quite nice. If we were a character, say, like Norowus, where we are uh, not Norowus, uh, Tovak, where we have more block based abilities, I probably would have gone definitely for Cure just for that bottom ability. Then we're, we're, we're looking at a character that wants to do more block actions. So that's uh, making disease better. But for, for us, it's, it's really very similar. But that is our turn. Rewards claimed. Dummy player white, so he will draw two more. And it's back round to us. Ooh, I didn't move us. We did generate the movement. I think. Did I generate the movement? I don't think I did, did I? <laughs> we would have had to have done... that. Oops, back there in the chest. We needed to actually be on the site. My mistake. Got too carried away pulling it off and uh, seeing if we could actually take it on. Um, we could have used one of our influence cards, but our plan was uh, to do the recruit. So this seems the fairest way. And we're now down to a five card limit, which is what we should have had. There was no new information revealed, so it doesn't feel like we've cheated too much doing that. So our turn, we want to do coercion, influence six, and promise with one of the many, many white die in the source. So adding these together, influence six, reputation minus one. And influence four, we have 10 influence to spend. We are going to claim guardian golems. 
because they are the only one we can claim, the only one that has this Mage Tower symbol. That spiky tower, a double arrow, not some weird traffic signal, it is a Mage Tower. We then have, so we spent seven, we have three left. We are going to ready a level one unit at the cost of two influence per level. That's another two. We have one influence remaining. Nothing we can do with one influence. And this is our action. Recruiting is an action for the round. We can't now play movement. It would have to be movement first and then an action. But since we have to be on this spot, that is it. We're losing one reputation based on Ruthless Coercion's ability. And end our turn. Green mana. Perfect for marching. We didn't get any fame, so that's that. Process the dummy. Green. One more card. That's his turn. Good and quick. Okay. I would like to move to either this space or this space. Because from those two spaces, we could reveal two tiles. And there's eight in the deck. There's still a lot of countryside. We've only revealed one. Not sure which it would be more advantageous. Let's reveal these two, hopefully. We've got Temporal Portal which lets us move to an adjacent safe space. If we're generating four movement by using a green crystal, that is enough to reveal one tile. We could... Yeah. Just temple portal into the desert, and then four movement to get two tiles revealed. We get our hand limit one bigger, ready for whatever we potentially see. We've got mana draw as well, ready to waste another white dice next turn if we need it. Yeah, that feels pretty good. So let's do the actions in, in order. Temporal portal first moves us out into the desert. Then we have to commit once we reveal new information to this action. So although with a move four, we can reveal two, we do do it sequentially. It may change our mind seeing this tile. We might want to move two and fight something. So, I will start with the outside tile. Yeah, I'm pretty certain countryside tiles can be adjacent to one, so long as that tile is adjacent to two, and core tiles have to be adjacent to two. We'll just check. Walk through rules. Movement, page seven. Take a little sip while I'm doing this. A lot of talking. Yes, countryside tiles can be, only be placed such that they will be adjacent to at least two other tiles or adjacent to a tile that borders two other tiles. So the tile it borders, oh, the tile it borders only borders one. So we would have to choose this space. 
and start here and then we could reveal here. Cool. I don't know why I was thinking this one was next to both starting locations, but there we go. So we've revealed one tile. There's the war beasts. We do have two movement. We could move to this countryside space. And we've only got a range attack of three. We've got the golems, but I think we will also reveal another tile. Okay, a lot of forests over here. Not really what I wanted to see. Not at night anyway. It costs so much to move into it. Five movement makes it really not worth it. So our hand size will be one bigger because of temporal portal. We could use foresters for two more movement. Or we could discard two cards for one extra movement. But let's keep hold of these. Is that a cave with treasure? There's a couple here. We've got a red crystal mine. If you end your turn on the crystal mine, you gain a red crystal of the corresponding color. So we've actually revealed white, green, and red. And this one, this little hole, is a monster den, I believe it's called. Monster den. We could go in there punch something in the face, hopefully kill it, and get two crystals as a reward. But it's a little out of the way, moving all the way over here. We'd have to fight this as we go past and reveal. We need to get to the cities, so we'll probably either head just up this way or over this way. Sadly, that treasure might have to go missing this time around but there are better there are better dungeons to go down we can try and find one which actually give us treasure this one only gives us crystals there is a deck over here of legendary artifacts and that's the good stuff that's what you want so we'll save our movement for now and we'll end our turn we roll it back as green and we process the dummy he's drawn white again which is unfortunate two more cards he has only three left in his deck we're going to have our turn he'll take his last three cards we'll have another he'll call end of round and then it's our go so we've got three turns we've only got two cards in our deck though so that's fine you saw it and got giddy. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. Are you familiar with Mage Knight? Or just keen for the, uh, the destruction of the mine? Ah, yes, Savage Harvesting. We can collect lots of crystals. We power it with a green mana. Gives us four movement. We could go to movement and use the foresters to reduce the movement cost of swamps. I was thinking fighting these guys, but going to actually going to this space, we would heal a wound at the end of the round so we wouldn't have to block the war beasts that would give us three attack no but in the games i play a cave is a place to level up and fight bosses yeah yeah very much it is the uh the beige monsters or uh, tan i think it calls them in the monster den are fairly strong we generate our four movement and two from the foresters plus their effect of reducing the move costs of forests by one so we're generating six movement the grasslands are two 
and the forest, because of their ability, is four. So that is enough movement. We have moved two spaces, so we can discard two cards to gain two crystals because of Savage Harvesting. So I think I'll discard a blue card for blue crystal. And possibly Swiftness, although that is a lot of movement cards. Our next level up is in three fame. The next turn, if we kill them, we will level up. We can get an advanced action. And we could go for hmm, some fairly aggressive cards. Reduce an attack, gain attack for each. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I think we will discard both these cards. We get a blue and a white crystal. I think I want dodge and weave because it reduces an enemy attack, uh, which can be very good when an enemy has something like swiftness, which is harder to block, or an elemental attack, which again is very hard to block. So all we're going to do is move. We'll have two cards left in our D deck, which we will draw. And we're ending our turn on this uh, Magical Glade. And the Magical Glade, at the start of a night round, gives us a black mana token, which will be useful to power our spell. And we will discard a wound at the end of our turn, which means we don't have to block the War Beasts when we fight them. We'll end our turn there. Rewards are claimed. And we'll process the dummy green he would draw one more but he's already at his limit we have drawn all of our cards so because of our tactic we actually get three more cards i forgot about that that's quite good here is our free black mana look at that gruesome but that is here automatically the game scripting as i said it's really good it knows where we are so We've got enough attack, let's go for it. So we're going to fight these guys. Um, we will let them hit us, which is three. Oh, it's, they're brutal as well. Mm. So brutal, you double the attack when you're dealing wounds. Hey, Emperor, good to have you back amongst us. Hey, yeah, uh, I think I might want to block them now, which is unfortunate. No, I'm going to take two wounds. Let's roll with it. The whole reason I came to this Magical Glade was for its healing benefits. So then we will use Expose as its stronger ability. Not that we need to, but we might as well. Enemies lose all resistances. So that would be their fire and ice resistance. I'm not planning to attack them with fire or ice, but it's gone. Then we've got attack two. Either card. So attack three from mass expose and two from determination. That will kill them. End of our turn, we can delete one of those wounds as the benefit of the Healing Glade. So three fame, as their little banner at the bottom shows, one reputation, and we're going to level up. Is it going good, the game and yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm all good. I've just been doing some housework today, but... I think the game's coming along quite well. We've just taken our first wounds. We've revealed a few extra tiles. It's progressing. Are you familiar with Mage Knight? Okay, we've got Puppet Master. 
Once a turn, either keep an enemy token you defeated or discard a previously kept token. If you discard one, either get its attack at half its strength or block at half its armor. Interesting. And that's not a flip ability, that's something we can do every turn. This one's a bit more, as it says, chaotic, Master of Chaos. When you gain a skill, when you gain the skill, roll a mana die and set the skill accordingly. Once a turn, you can move it clockwise, and depending on that color, either gain. If you if not used for your last turn, it can be incremented one spot on another player's turn. All right, so we could use it if we were playing a multiplayer game, but a bit of everything but not much of anything. Let's go for, well, we, we do have this option actually. So I was talking about the next time we leveled up having a few more options. You can see this arrow shows the skill for Norowus as well. We could either take one of our new ones. We can never take one we've previously chosen not to have. So that was last turn. Ooh, that seemed to have messed with the scripting. Um, we can't take Battle Hardened. If we take Bonds of Loyalty or any subsequent token from the dummy player, you have to take the first one. And I do think I might go with Bonds of Loyalty. Intimidate isn't a bad card. And we could hire, recruit another unit. This basically counts as one extra token. Yes, I like that. We will take this skill token. Unfortunately, it doesn't really fit in the scripting anywhere. I'm just going to place it off to the side. Hopefully I'll remember it's there. We have to take that skill card. Uh, not really, but a friend of yours showed it to you. I'm guessing that means it didn't go particularly well. It can be a brutal game to, to sit down and play when you don't know it. Okay, um, so we got our skill token, we got our advanced action, that is our turn. He's going to call end of round, we still get our final turn. So we are still on this magical glade, so we do have another black mana at the start of this turn, and if we stay where we are, we will heal one more wound. But that means we're staying still. We aren't making progress. We're next to a village. We could go there and recruit the crossbowman. We have a range attack. Probably worth picking them up. We have no movement, however. So if we want to move, we're playing one, two cards. Just tapping them sideways for their movement. There are six to recruit. Oh, we should actually add, we can add two more silver units. To the offer because of that skill token so that might change things uh, we have herbalists we could use interesting but i think it has to be the crossbowman so we'll use two movement to get into the village we've got intimidate now, a village has another ability. You can spend three influence to heal a wound. We could get rid of this last wound. Are we at a negative penalty over here? We are not. Uh, so yes, that works perfectly. We can just use the normal ability of Intimidate for the influence four. We will lose a reputation, fortunately. But that four 
plus this discount of five, and that discount is shown up here. Minus five, it's a little unclear. Pixelated. Um, but this unit gets a discount of five, which is why I don't want to get the herbalist, because it doesn't feel like we're getting good value. We'd get them for free, but we could get these guys for only one. So we'll claim them. Uh, you cannot because you're at your command limit, but I'm not because I have this skill token. So he only costs one additional influence, which because of Intimidate means we have three left over. We can get rid of a wound with a healing effect of the village. And then we haven't used a die from the source. We can't use gold, but we have Crystallize. We can use that with a white mana for one white crystal. There's a lot to remember. It's a bit confusing, but you do a good job of explaining things. Yeah, this is um, quite a complicated game. That's why there are these reference cards. There's a lot of reference cards. Every site that you visit has a little explanation card, and each character has little explanations for all of their skill tokens. So the first few times you're playing the game, or well, depends how regularly you play it. Um, maybe every time you might need to just reference a few things, but hopefully, you know, regular Monday night stream, if you guys follow us along, it might get a, a bit more intuitive. And I am more than open to uh, take people through on tabletop simulator drop me a, a message or something if people are wanting to learn and we can try and schedule something but they've already called end of round I believe end round called so unfortunately we're not going to draw our last three cards Frank needs to select a skill did select a skill I think this is where I've broken the scripting by uh, flipping over that token. I'm sorry. He always watches my videos on YouTube and I always break his game. <laughs> um. Let's just report it, but you'll probably see this video in a week when I upload it on YouTube. Flipped a skill token during level up phase, removed selection. See if I can figure this out somehow to get past it. It'll be a bit frustrating, isn't it? Can I go to a master? Okay, let's rewind a little bit. Now it didn't ask me to do this last time. Maybe if I just put this here. Ah, okay, so I'm going to put the skill token down here, even though it's meant to be a banner. All right, well, I've forgotten the guy's name. I always forget his name. Let me just find it because he does an outstanding job. He deserves a shout out. The similarity in Ooh. the that you're doing. Don't need to play a video. Stephen Miller. Yeah. Sorry, Stephen. You're going to get a bug report for something that isn't a bug. It's just me putting a skill token in the wrong spot. 
<laughs> All right, so that is going to be the end of the round, and we can have a look now then. So this will be an interesting one. Ah, no, it's fine. I was going to say it's going to be interesting because I'm not sure what color crystal he's going to get because this card is both red and green, but he's getting a blue crystal. That card is just going into his hand. So we'll see he'll have two crystals, which are blue. Now I've got 18 decks.